Hi there guys, this is Angie, your host with another marvellous videos this time. 13 underrated 80s horror guilty pleasure movies that have become horror gems now. Those were the days. Movies could get away with just about anything and people had mastered the art of enjoying mindless entertainers. Yes, we are talking about the 80s, the era of horror flicks that weren't meant to be taken seriously. Let's face it, we don't always seek some mind-altering, personality-defining movie. There are times when you just want to hit the couch and put your brain on sleep mode. These movies come in handy during such testing times and they go down well with a couple of beers. If you are ready to put your inner critic to rest, we are here to entertain you with some timeless guilty pleasures today. In this video, we have picked out the most underrated 80s horror flicks that are loved by the purists, even today. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. C.H.U.D. 1984 George Cooper used to be a famous fashion photographer, but now he has foregone the fame and fortune. He is invested in a project where he photographs the homeless people in New York City, and many of these people live in the city's sewers and tunnels. Meanwhile, there has been a strange case of missing people, and many of them are the underground dwellers. NYPD Captain Bosch is investigating the case and the man who runs the local homeless shelter believes that the whole thing is just a major government cover-up. They soon discover the presence of strange cannibalistic monsters who live underground. Previously, they used to prey upon the homeless living there, but with the drop in their population, they've taken to hunting people on the surface. This is a part of a larger government conspiracy and the few well-wishers must come up with a plan to get rid of these creatures. CHUD Chud might not be a polished monster classic, but it certainly is an enjoyable one. This atmospheric monster thriller has seriously budgetary constraints, but it makes up for the shortcomings with a gritty vibe coupled with real-life New York locations. The script has some priceless lines and the subtle humour bodes well with all the suspense. The creature effects might seem rough, but the cheesy practical effects can still give some of the modern-day CGI a run for its money. The Chud, or the cannibalistic humanoid underground dwellers, are basically those individuals who were exposed to toxic waste and they mutated into monstrous beings. We were quite impressed with the delightful casting and Christopher Curry from Starship Troopers fits into the role of the police officer quite nicely. The likes of John Hurd and Kim Greist are also pretty impressive. These are not exactly your usual depthless B-movie characters and they help in making this an enjoyable film. In fact, New York City acts as a character on its own and the grim, dirty background makes things very realistic. The touch of a serious conspiracy underneath the apparently simple monster drama is charismatic, and we completely understand why this film went to, on to become a cult favourite. There was a sequel to this movie, which happened to be a disaster, but this one is certainly ripe for some late-night entertainment. The Stuff, 1985. This movie will make you question the next unknown dessert that you enjoy. The story begins with a mysterious but delicious white gooey substance that oozes out from the earth. It is soon marketed as a new sensational dessert and the American people develop a taste for it. This new product is lapped up, but there is more to this delicious treat than what meets the eye. The product has a rather sinister origin and the entity takes over the minds of those who consume it. 
turning them into zombie-like humans. They simply cannot get enough of this dessert, and they will do just about anything to continue snacking on this bizarre substance. Is there a cure for this madness, or will the entire country sink into insanity? Perfecting a horror comedy is a work of art, and the stuff seems to have it ticked all the right boxes. Larry Cohen is known for his satirical pieces, and this movie in his unique monster movie satire, mixed with a funny social commentary on consumerism. Make no mistake, this film is entertaining to the bone, and the numerous plot twists are sure to keep you guessing. The stuff is quite an interesting concept, and this delicious dessert transforms people into obedient zombies hungry for more of it. The effects are nicely handled and the stuff looks quite appealing. It is, of course, a parable about excessive consumerism brainwashing people. But even without such philosophical interpretations, it is quite an enjoyable affair. The narrative contains thrills, some remarkable sequences and some ironical moments, laced with the tongue-in-cheek humour. The acting performances are impressive, and Michael Moriarty impresses the most in the lead role. The plot is bordered on blob, but with a twist, of course. The inventive gore is delightful, and the only downside of this film is that it can make you avoid ice cream for a while. It is certainly worth a shot, and Larry Cohen's innovative horror comedy is not something to miss out on. The Fun House, 1981 Amy and her boyfriend Buzz visit a sleazy travelling carnival and they are accompanied by two other teenagers, Amy's best friend Liz and her boyfriend Richie. Richie comes up with a bizarre challenge for the group, where they must spend the night in the fun house, which is a dark ride. They settle down after the park closes and this is when they notice the ride assistant. He seems to be a rather strange fellow wearing a Frankenstein's monster mask and we soon discover that he is a maniacal killer. The teenagers panic, but their efforts to leave the funhouse are in vain. It turns out that the crazy murderer is the son of the funhouse Barker, and there is a demonic side to the deformed killer. The teens try their best to protect themselves from this murderous spree, but can they survive this battle to death? What do you want? When this movie was released, the slasher flicks were making big bucks. The poster of this film suggested that it was going to be another run-of-the-mill slasher flick, but it turned out to be something more. While this annoyed some of the fans, we admire this well-made atmospheric thriller that has the subtle flavour of a slasher. You know Tobe Hooper is not a director to be playing around, and he succeeds in introducing some spine-chilling moments to make things spice. The director also cleverly uses the props in the funhouse to add to the atmosphere, and he is helped by a relatively unknown cast punching their way above their weights. While the funhouse might not rank up there with the likes of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Poltergeist, it is still one of Tobe Hooper's better works. Yes, the plot does get predictable after a point, but fighting a crazed killer never gets boring for the audience. It has some old horror standards such as dumb teenagers getting into trouble, and the characters certainly confirmed the typical slasher flick stereotypes. Basically, this film is everything that 80s horror stands for, and that is why it has a special place in our hearts. Phenomena, 1985. Jennifer is the teenage daughter of a famous actor and she has some trouble with sleepwalking. However, she has a special ability where she can communicate telepathically with insects. When she arrives at a boarding school, her special skills come in handy while solving a string of mysterious murders. A Scottish entomologist, Professor John McGregor, is investigating the case of a possible serial killer who is murdering young girls in the region. After Jennifer's friend disappears all of a sudden and the professor is killed, she realises that the killer has her as the next target. Can she outsmart the killer and put an end to this menace? 
This film has been directed by famous Italian director Dario Angento and he regards this as one of his best works. Clearly there is something special about this movie that makes it such an enchanting experience. It ranks above the rest simply because of its originality and the weird stuff fits right into the narrative. The story is moving and there are shocking twists that change our whole perspective from time to time. It was fun to watch the pet chimpanzee of the professor, but who apparently it wasn't all that fun for Jennifer Connelly, who had to shoot with the moody ape. She got her finger bitten off during one of the scenes and she had to be rushed to the hospital to have it reattached. However, it has to be said that a 14-year-old Jennifer Connelly made the world take notice of her acting skills with this film. The visuals are haunting enough to make it seem like a proper horror flick and it also has the thrills of a classic slasher flick. Speaking of slasher movies, there is a serious element of gore in this movie and the brutal killings can be a bit too much for the weak-hearted. The only major issue with this film is that it drags along a bit too much at times. Shortening the narrative by a good 15 minutes would have done the trick. Otherwise, Phenomena is a bizarre and genius horror flick that will leave you bewildered. <laughs> Of Unknown Origin, 1983. We don't exactly have friendly relations with rodents, but just love how crazy can one get over the presence of one. In this movie, Bart Hughes is an ambitious man with a sorted life. He has the perfect family and a job that has tons of opportunities to move up the ladder. His wife and son leave for a vacation, but Bart has to stay back to work on a project that has the potential to get him a promotion. However, this simple movie has greater repercussions and Bart doesn't have the slightest idea. He finds out about the presence of a rat in his basement, and he goes a bit crazy while trying to kill the rat. Bart loses his sense of surroundings and even his own self and ends up destroying most of the house while trying to finish off the rodent. Of Unknown Origin is an exciting horror thriller that treads the fine line between man and beast. <laughs> We often look for innovation when it comes to horror flicks, and we cannot imagine something more creative than having a rat as the main antagonist. This movie makes a simple premise very convincing and helped by some good visuals. It makes quite an impact on the audience. The narrative becomes increasingly surreal and the man-rat standoff reaches dark comic proportions. The protagonist is played by Peter Willer and it seems like Robocop is not equipped enough to handle the threats of a deadly rodent. We have a rather unusual antagonist here, a rat that shows signs of being strangely smart. Bart is struggling to cope with the pressure of work and his solitude and the stress add up to create an insane situation. He turns from a normal person to a psychotic maniac with an unexplained obsession. The movie promises loads of fun and it is quite entertaining to watch Bart try several methods to get rid of the pest. He uses everything from small traps to poison, but nothing seems to work. Is the animal actually a figment of his imagination? Well, we leave that on your wise sense of judgment, but we can assure you of some of the shocking jump scares that will take you by surprise. Peter Weller comes up with a solid performance and makes his role quite convincing. Overall, this rat invasion horror thriller is going to be an enjoyable affair and you might be pleasantly surprised by the quality of this movie. The Entity, 1982. Carla Moran is a single mother and she is finding it hard to make ends meet. She is desperately trying to get her life back on track and the troubles of this mother of three are increased with the presence of a mysterious entity. She experiences an inexplicable supernatural incident where an invisible entity molests her. The attack by this unseen force leaves her in shock and the doctor seems to think that this is simply a result of her own personal trauma manifesting through herself. Carla is caught up in a dilemma trying to distinguish between facts and fiction. However, it soon turns out to be more than a psychological thing and she is attacked by the unseen force in front of her children as well. When the attacks turn increasingly violent, 
She must find out a proper solution. But how does one escape from such an abstract evil? When Martin Scorsese recognises a movie as one of his favourite horror flicks of all time, you know there is going to be some serious substance. Many have dubbed The Entity as one of the most disturbing horror flicks from the 80s. And they aren't exaggerating. It is said to be based on true incidents and the tales of a helpless suburban mother will leave you shaken. It might look like a fairy tale traditional horror flick, except for the main premise where the evil spirit is interested in having its way with Carla. Barbara Hersey delivers a fiery and wholesome performance as the protagonist, and without her acting skills, the movie wouldn't have been the same. Beneath the usual storyline, there is an interesting underlying theme of violation. The narrative has some gritty moments of tension, and the overall creepy atmosphere gets to the audience after a point. The makeup effects are nicely done, and even the special effects deserve a word of appreciation. Sidney J. Fury's direction makes the journey full of suspense, and the finale is surely going to blow your minds. The Serpent and the Rainbow, 1988 Dr. Dennis Allen from Harvard is back from a successful research trip in Amazonas, and this time he's invited by the president of a Boston pharmaceutics industry. He is asked to travel to Haiti to look into a bizarre incident where a man who died in 1978 has now returned to life. The president of the pharmaceutics industry, Andrew Cassidy, wants the samples of the drug used on this man. This rumoured drug reportedly renders the recipient paralysed, but he retains his consciousness. The doctors are often misled by the use of this drug and they pronounce the victims dead. Dr. Dennis Allen heads to Haiti and he starts off a shocking and surreal investigation on this matter. He meets the doctor treating the man who is back from the dead. And to add to his troubles, Haiti is in the middle of a revolution. With time, he uncovers some sinister secrets that might throw some light on the birth of the zombie legend. It turns out that death is only the mere beginning of an extensive journey to hell. We are simple people. We hear the word of a Wes Craven film and we go and watch it. The Serpent and the Rainbow is not one of his classics and you certainly don't need to analyse every single thing in the movie intricately. As long as you enjoy what is being thrown at you, it will end up being a thoroughly entertaining film. There is a sense of creepiness that engulfs the narrative and the man behind the horror gems like Nightmare on Elm Street brings another perfect horror thriller for the fans. What we loved the most about the story is the realism and the idea of voodoo zombies. The narrative is not just about the horror aspect but it also involves the politics of the land. The dictator of Haiti becomes part of the plot, and even those looking past the horror aspects will find a solid cultural document here. As for the acting performances, Bill Pullman leads a spirited cast, and the supporting actors have done a decent job as well. However, it has to be said that a lot of the plot points don't really make much sense. For instance, the ending is somewhat stupid and the logical inconsistencies might be troubling for some. Ignore such flaws and you can enjoy an exotic voodoo zombie spin-off that offers some nightmarish moments. Street Trash, 1987 Alcohol is known to have certain adverse effects on the body, but one shown in this movie will make you stop before reaching for the bottle. The story begins with a liquor store owner in Brooklyn, New York City. He finds a few cases of cheap acidic booze in his basement, and since it has been lying there for a long time, the quality is questionable. The owner decides to sell his liquor to the local hobos, but he's unaware of the impact it would have on those consuming it. Anyone who drinks this booze melts away, and a cop is determined to solve the mystery. He is also after the tyrannical Vietnam vet, who apparently has a self-proclaimed kingdom in the junkyard helped by some other hopeless vets under his command. As the stories come together, Street Trash combines some dark comedy with body horror, and the end result is mightily entertaining. The 80s came up with a lot of so-called zero-budget horror movies, 
and many of these films could surprise you with the end result. Street Trash is one of the latter, and it gained quite a reputation courtesy of the splatter effects. It was hilarious and grotesque at the same time, watching the homeless people melt from the inside out into a multicoloured goo. There are plenty of jokes, some extremely inappropriate, to keep you on your toes. And while this is not a masterpiece, you wouldn't forget about street trash quite easily. In the middle of the toxic hooch narrative, there are also two derelict brothers who are struggling to survive from the deranged Vietnam vet. The director Jim Muro brings multiple plots and makes them come together after a point. He maintains a sordid and warped tone throughout the narrative. And there are some show-stopping moments which are so messy that you would be reminded of the best 80s B-horror. The dark humour, like we said, doesn't hold back punches and maybe it is because people could get away with a lot back in the day. The special effects are the icing on the cake and exploding and melting humans are simply instances of the effects gone right. The enthusiastic cast performed with considerable zest and the vibrant cinematography deserves some good words. In short, this is a silly, messy movie that is far too much fun not to be enjoyed. 17 seconds, I'll show you. 17 seconds. Reanimator, 1985. Herbert West is an ambitious medical student who is obsessed with the quest of overcoming the obstacle of death. He developed a fluid that is capable of bringing dead tissues back to life, but his work in Switzerland is interrupted by the mysterious death of his professor. Herbert moves to a New England and he continues where he left off. He starts off with experiments on his fluid with dead feline tissues and soon takes it up a notch with fresh human cadavers. Herbert is joined by his skeptic roommate Dan Kane and they soon start going deeper into unexplored territories. When the campus starts brimming with several reanimated corpses, there are going to be consequences that the young scientists did not bargain for. This movie, based on a story by H.P. Lovecraft, stands as a firm reminder of why one shouldn't try to tamper with the natural ways of life and death. It is not an easy task to assemble the stories of H.P. Lovecraft into movies. Most attempts haven't exactly succeeded, and Reanimator wouldn't as well, had it not been for the silly tone of the narrative. The story takes the 80s propensities for gore and never attempts to be too serious. In fact, the narrative was even remotely realistic, it would have been a terrible watch. The movie throws up gallons of blood and internal organs and you can imagine the kind of gore that will make the gore hounds happy. The effects are purposely cheesy, but even with that, the movie is not meant for the squeamish. There are some wild turns as the experiments grow outlandish and dangerous. You know things are about to go wrong very soon. This campy movie is helped out by the cast, and David Gale and Robert Sampson are fun in their respective roles. Barbara Crampton is charming as the girlfriend, and Stuart Gordon surely knows a thing or two about how to make the most of his actors. If we must point fingers, then the performance of Bruce Abbott isn't exactly convincing. The crazy and sadistic characters are far from reality, and they literally have no compassion for anything. But then, we began by saying how this film was never meant to be taken seriously. And if you just want some pure entertainment, go ahead and enjoy Reanimator. The sequels to this movie, however, are not as charming. What are you going to do to me? I'm going to kiss. From Beyond, 1986. The parallel universe of pleasure doesn't always have a happy conclusion, as many of you know from the Hellraiser movies. From Beyond offers a different take on this alternate universe, and Stuart Gordon brings you the chilling story of a machine called the Resonator. Dr. Edward Pretorius and his assistant Crawford develop this machine which can stimulate the sixth sense through the pineal gland. After activating the machine, Crawford watches in horror as strange creatures are seen flying in the air. Edward refuses to turn off the machine, even as the experiment seems to go out of control. Finally, the neighbours hear the ruckus and call the police, and they arrive, 
to find Dr. Edward Pretorius beheaded and Crawford trying to escape. It seems rather obvious that he is the culprit and he is sent to a psychiatric institution and Dr. Catherine McMichael's requests for his custody. Together, they go on to turn on the machine one more time and this time, Dr. Pretorius appears in a disgusting mutant shape that attacks them. Is this the path to unlimited pleasure riddled with infinite pain from beyond? She will go into my mind and I will go into her. Stuart Gordon surely knows how to make use of the Lovecraftian stories. And he does that one more time after Reanimator. He takes the original story and adds his own gruesome elements to keep things interesting. We have to say that the best moments of the film come when the narrative sticks to the original Lovecraftian tale and the innovations are more of a miss. The climax, for instance, is somewhat predictable and the only things going for it are the remarkable special effects. The slimy, monstrous things look terrific and coupled with the spine-tingling soundtrack, things presented perfectly. In many ways, this is a homage to the monster flicks of the past. And considering the low budget, the end results are fascinating. The tongue-in-cheek acting performances are noteworthy and Jeffrey Coombs shines in his crooked role. Barbara Crampton is a treat to watch and she can make people go weak in their knees in her black leather outfit. From Beyond is a movie that you can watch multiple times and this can be an ideal pick for a Halloween night movie marathon. Shocker 1989 A serial killer is on the prowl and he poses as a TV repairman Horace Pinker on the outside. He finds his way to the house of investigation officer L.T. Parker and kills his family. His only surviving son, Jonathan, has an unexplained psychic connection to the killer through his dreams. He guides his father to Horace Pinker and although he manages to escape, he is later caught in the act of kidnapping. He is sentenced to death in the electric chair but no one knew that Pinker had promised his soul to the devil in return for some strange powers. He comes back from the dead as an energy source and he is now deadlier than ever. He takes over the bodies of random people and the murderous spree continues. Can Jonathan find a way to bring the notorious killing entity into the real world? The only thing deadlier than a maniacal serial killer is one who comes back from the dead with special powers. Wes Craven's innovative take on a supernatural killer might be somewhat quirky, but it is enjoyable beyond any doubt. The influences of A Nightmare on Elm Street are quite obvious, but there are subtle changes that set this apart. The narrative begins as a usual slasher flick, but there soon comes the paranormal touch when the killer comes back from the dead. One could argue that the film's layout is a bit erratic, but it is hardly a concern because you aren't watching some Oscar-nominated classic. The acting performances are nothing out of the world, but they fit nicely into the roles. One major debate surrounding this film is whether the makers should have toned down the cheese. Well, we respectfully disagree because that is precisely the charm of the 80s horror flicks. The special effects feel rushed and they are hilarious at times, but given the meagre budget, it is still good enough. Watch out for the final bits of the film because they promise to be the most original and the finest parts of the narrative. If you are a Wes Craven fan like us, you must try this one out simply for the bizarre experience of it. <laughs> Let me give you a hand, Bill. <laughs> Society 1989. We all have certain family traits that we aren't particularly proud of, but everything fails in front of the trauma faced by a younger teenager, Bill Whitney. He comes from a rather upper class family and his parents seem to mix amongst similar status people. However, it's he's pretty down to earth and he often feels like a misfit in the family dynamics. Things are revealed when his sister's boyfriend David bugs the family 
He brings Bill some disturbing footage of a sick society where people indulge in all sorts of perversions from incest to other twisted fantasies. After the death of David in a mysterious car accident, Bill takes it upon himself to investigate his family further. The findings will leave him scarred and also end up being an unforgettable trauma for the audience. Society has to be one of the weirdest horror movies we have ever come across. This fast-paced, bizarre narrative takes you by the scruff of your neck and doesn't let go till the demented finale. It has to be one of Brian Usner's most controversial movies, but it is also one of his finest works. This is his take on the fight of the classes and he presents the same in a rather original fashion. The movie starts off like just another conspiracy thriller, but the unpleasant secrets of the family add the horrifying touch to the story. The suspense thickens with time, and the disgusting yet fascinating final moments end up being the extremes. Society is helped by the brilliant work done by special effects genius Screaming Mad George, and the shunting party is brought to life with the perfect yuckiness around it. The actors have done a decent job, and even with everything going for the movie, it is a tragedy that it did not rake in the big box. If you can handle a fair share of twisted stuff, you could go ahead and check this creepy horror movie that questions the boundaries of ethics at every step. The Changeling, 1980 John Russell is a music composer who was traumatised after the death of his wife and daughter in a car accident. He finally decides to deal with his sorrow and rents an older mansion to live in peace and compose his music. However, he has no idea about a supernatural presence in the house. The spirit of a child has been trapped in the mansion for ages and it uses John's despair to uncover decades of deceit and wrong done to it. The child had been murdered back in the day and someone linked to the killings is roaming around free. John gets help from the person who helped John get the mansion and together they go about finding the answers that might be the key to set the spirit free. It is said that this movie was based on a true incident and while the facts might be debatable, the film is undoubtedly a spooky experience. It starts off with a sudden tragedy and soon the protagonist finds himself living in a haunted mansion. The Changeling thrives on some terrific performances from the cast and George C. Scott is outstanding as the protagonist. The narrative takes some time to set the atmosphere right but once the build-up is complete, you are all set for a delightful story. The director, Peter Medek, does a great job at building the suspense slowly and steadily, and instead of cheap jump scares, he opts for the slow burn effect of a haunting ambience. This movie is never really about blood and gore, so you shouldn't be expecting a lot of violent moments. The final scenes of the movie will stay with you forever, and it is a revenge story that satisfies the audience. All in all, this is a chilling ghost story that is spooky, but also quite touching, and you certainly cannot skip this classic 80s horror flick. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone. <laughs>